Hello and welcome to sound design tutorial number 5. Is my microphone sounding about 20% sexier? So, in this video we talk about formant filters. What are formants in general? What is a formant filter? How can you make your own? And why do they work? So, first things first. What is a formant filter? Well, I think the best way of explaining it is that it's made up of two words, formant and filter. A formant is a certain frequency that is more pronounced than the rest. This frequency is caused by resonance in our vocal tract. So it's caused by our vocal cords and the shape of our heads and throats, and is one specific frequency that's more pronounced than all the others. So if you take a recording of your voice and look at the spectrum, which actually I guess I could do right now, hopefully this won't mess up the recording. Edison, where are you? E. Okay. You can see that some of these frequencies, e.g. this one and this one, are much more pronounced than all the others. These are formants. This frequency here is a formant. This frequency here is a formant, I assume. So that's what a formant is. And generally, different vowels will have different formants in different places, That, which is why it sounds like the way it does, which is why it sounds like that vowel. And if you can make a sound that has formants in the right places, it will sound like that vowel. And that's what a formant filter aims to do. It's a special type of filter that tries to put peaks and troughs in the right places to make your sound sort of in the same shape as a vowel by putting formants in the right places. To help demonstrate this, I've made this example. I made a very simple bass in citrus that sounds like this. Okay, and now I've put a formant filter on it, and it sounds like this. Which is quite a big difference, and you'll notice it does sound very sort of vowely. If you look at the spectrum up here, you can see that there's very obviously some frequencies that are being boosted, and these frequencies are moving around as the vowel changes. So, how can we do this ourselves, exactly? Well, there are a couple of ways. Firstly, it's important to note that this works the best when you have a very full sound, a sound with lots of frequencies in it. But that should have been fairly obvious and would probably have come to you with some experimentation. So, I'm going to make just a sound. In fact, I'm going to recreate the same bass I had a while ago, which was just a saw wave, band limit, gibbs off, short pulse, one times, ring mod, done, except this should be at one, and this should be down, and there's the bass, and as you can see up here, that it's, it's very, there's lots of frequencies in it, it's very flat, which is perfect. So, I'm going to try and make my own format filter. I haven't done this before, so I don't know how well it's going to go. But never mind. So, I'm going to turn this on. Take it off the master so it doesn't get horrible feedback. Whoops. Okay. E there we go. Now I'm going to try and make it sound like an E. This sort of worked. So you might have seen the process there that I was doing. I had one, on, one span on the right, one span on the left, and I was moving around looking at this little reading in the bottom left here to see, or the top right now for some reason, to see what sort of frequency it was at, and then using the parametric EQ to just tweak it a bit. So here's what it sounds like with my EQ on it. Without. So it's done something, and if I move these around, these, the frequencies of them, it sort of changes the vowel a little bit. So I'm on the right track. 
To make life a little bit easier, you can just Google format tables and find websites like this, which is just where every single frequency should be, where every single amplitude should be, and what the bandwidth of each of these should be. So basically the exact EQ settings that you need to recreate certain vowels, which is good. However, there's a slightly easier way, and this comes in the form of a plugin called Former 8, and this is what I used in the example. So, I should not have closed that. Okay, so, we have this. Which already has a decent amount of different format filters built in, and you can roll between all of them. Nice. There's also a paid plugin called Wow Filter by Sugarbytes, which I've used before but don't have right now, and I'm not going to pirate it just for this video. But go and look it up. This isn't a Wow Filter tutorial. The very last thing to talk about is why do format filters work? Why do they sound the way they do? So far, this actually should already be obvious. It's just mimicking the sound of a human mouth. And in fact, I've already done this, but if I, if I go... Uh, hang on. E You'll see I get a certain shape of vowel. And I can go... Ooh. And as you can see, the different vowels have different shapes. Like, this has got a lot more high frequency content. It's got this frequency here, this frequency here, and this frequency here, which aren't present over here. Though these four at the start seem to be very similar. Although this one's a lot quieter. And you'll see that different vowels all have different shapes. So like... ah, uh, And if you spend enough time screwing around with your filters to recreate these shapes, you can get vowels on pretty much whatever sound you like. Which is nice. So then, I think that that just about does it for this tutorial. I don't know how helpful this would have been in knowing all about format filters, but at least it might have brought them to your attention, piqued your curiosity to go and find out a little bit more. Go and download Former 8, put it on your bases and see what happens, and I'll see you in Sound Design 6.